All right. Uh, no, my scope didn't die, uh, but I decided to upgrade. And no, I'm not throwing it away. I'm going to sell it to my friend. But uh, I did do an upgrade. So yeah, let me uh, readjust the camera and show you my new toy. All right, I broke down and bought a new scope. Um, it's a Rigel. This is a Rigel MS uh, MSO 5072. <clears throat> now, the the reason that I got this particular model is that it's the very cheapest one in the line of scopes that I wanted. I wanted the MSO 5354, I think, would be the number. Anyway, um, this is sold as a 70 megahertz two-channel scope, okay? 70 megahertz two-channel scope, but there's a software hack, and guess what? <laughs> this thing came in the mail today, and I turned it on, and before I put a scope probe on it, before I did anything to it, I hacked it, and now it is a 350 megahertz oscilloscope, four-channel, and two 25 megahertz arbitrary waveform record, uh, waveform generators. So <laughs> it is a fancy scope now. So it went from a uh, $900 purchase price to $2,900 value. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty nice. Let me, uh, let me show you, uh, system help option list. Uh, let me, can I zoom in on that any? Anyway, this is the option list now. So these are all of the up software upgrades that you can get. And it adds a uh, deep memory option and uh, serial decoding and all that kind of stuff. And it turns on four channels, turns on the ARB waveform, uh, waveform regenerators. Uh, it turns on a whole bunch of stuff and goes to 350 megahertz. So anyway, it's now 350 megahertz, four channel. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think the first thing I want to do, so I'm showing, um, uh, I'm showing one waveform over here that's the, uh, uh, the little generator on the side that you used to, uh, uh, can you see that? Oh, I, I'm, zoomed, I'm zoomed way in again, sorry. I'm using, uh, channel one is this uh, uh, probe calibrator output here. Um, and then uh, channel two I have going over to the first ARB. So the ARB is here and you can change different types of things. I can make it, uh, make it be a sine wave, uh, and I can change the frequency. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, so I think uh, what I want to do is uh, go back here to one, oh, it's touch screen as well. I'll tell you it's touch screen. Uh, one kilohertz, there we go. Uh, yeah, so it's fully touch screen, whole bunch of menus and stuff. Uh, it's got all kinds of stuff. We'll be going through that uh, in later videos and stuff. It's got some cool capabilities in it. But uh, I thought for the very first video, uh, I would want to test the speed. See if it really is 350 megahertz. And uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, I'm going to be using my HP 8921 uh, synthesizer to come in and, and generate a, a sine wave. I have a 50 ohm load coming on the input. Um, and here we can see, uh, let's turn on measuring. Let's see here. I think I can do, all right. So this is cool touch tone, a uh, touch tone, <laughs> touch, touch screen. And it said counter. So I clicked on counter and now I have a counter here. So it's saying hundred megahertz. Great. Uh, and we can also do a measurement. We'll add a measurement. We'll add a, uh, vertical measurement. We'll add, uh, volts RMS. Ah, there we go. Okay. Now we have volts RMS down at the bottom there. So I can, let me, uh, let me see if I can, uh, change the camera a little bit here. That's a little bit better. Anyway, so we have 100 megahertz and we have uh, 211 millivolts. 211 millivolts. And so let's do a calculation. We'll do uh, 211 times 0.707. So 
So we want this to be 156. That'll be the uh, 3 dB down. So let's increase the frequency here. Let's go to 350. And we are at uh, 200, 200 millivolts, so we're still in range. Let's go to 400 hertz, uh, 400 megahertz. And we are at 186. We're still within spec. Let's go to 450. 450, we're at 177, still within spec. 500. 500 megahertz. And we are at right about 168. Still, it's still above the uh, 3dB point, and we're at 500 megahertz. So this scope is screaming fast. Uh, it is really, really good. And look at this. We can still zoom in on it. So 500 megahertz, still getting a perfectly nice sine wave. Uh, yeah, this thing has got uh, eight giga samples per second. So this thing is amazing. <laughs> All right, let's turn on channel two, see if it goes down. Ah, it did go down a little bit. Yeah, at 132 now. Let's turn on channel three and channel four. All right, so at channel three, it did drop. Let's see if we can go back up. 400. So at 400, with it, we're within spec. We're at 160 and it's 156 that we can't drop below. So with four channels on, it's at least a 400 megahertz scope. Let's go to uh, 450. Nope. 420. Yeah, 420 is right about at the limit. So 420 megahertz with all channels on. And if I turn uh, everything off except for one channel, we can get 500 megahertz out of this scope. So, yeah, pretty impressive. Go Rigel. Uh, it's Regal, actually. The way that they pronounce it is Regal. I've always said Rigel, so I'm going to say Rigel probably forever. But uh, Regal is the is the uh, name that the company uses themselves. I've been eyeing these scopes for some time. The hack has been available for about two years now, um, and it's gotten pretty streamlined now. It's still scary as heck. <laughs> but uh, I'm told that it's hard to brick these things, so. Yeah, hard to tell. I'm going to have to do some testing on the probes and stuff. Um, it comes with probes that are um, supposedly uh, 350 megahertz probes. What I've uh, seen, what I've heard, is that you should have scope probes that are faster than your oscilloscope uh, to the factor of about 1.5. So if you have a 100, 100 megahertz oscilloscope, you should be using 150 megahertz um, uh, scope probe. So uh, I, uh, even though this came with nice probes, it came with 350 megahertz probes. Um, some people were arguing instead of buying the the 5072, you should buy the 5074 because it comes with four scope probes, whereas this model only comes with two scope probes. And they say that the scope probes aren't cheap, so you might as well get the four, uh, four channel uh, option, then you'll get the four scope probes on it. Well, my thinking was just the opposite. My thinking was get the scope as cheap as possible and um, then get better probes for it. The 350 megahertz probes, I don't think are good enough for this scope. I think the scope can be better than that. So uh, I went onto eBay and I bought this probe, which is a 500 megahertz probe. So this should put this thing uh, in its good working order. And uh, I'm gonna have to do a bunch of tests on this, but uh, this is an Agilent probe. Uh, it's a uh, 173B probe. So this is a 10 to one, uh, uh, 100 megahertz, I mean, uh, 500 megahertz scope probe. So it should uh, should be doing good. Okay, um, so the one other thing that the scope can do um, is right here, and we get a 16 channel logic analyzer. <laughs> and so I bought the uh, I bought the probe uh, that plugs in it plugs in down here, and then it gives you a uh, an actual uh, 16 
let's see here, Active Logic Probe, 16 channels. Uh, I'm assuming this can go just as fast as the regular scope and stuff, 350 megahertz or whatever. So uh, that's pretty cool. And then it comes with uh, a bunch of little uh, uh, little wires and, and uh, clip leads and everything, just like a regular uh, a regular Logic Probe. So that was uh, about a $300 option, I think. Three, 350 maybe, um, which is a lot, but I was saving a lot on the scope because <laughs> I was hacking it. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can set up uh, triggering and all kinds of kinds of cool stuff there. So let's turn that off. All right, so I decided to go ahead and buy this and uh, be able to do digital stuff as well. So that's really cool because you'll be able to, a lot of times I'll use the four uh, the extra th channel three, channel four to do latching and stuff on digital signals and things. So this will, this will free me up to do that. So yeah. So there you go. Uh, 350 megahertz, four channel, two arbitrary generators and a 16 channel logic analyzer and, uh, probably a whole lot more.